Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 148. Day Day 3148, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 148, we are in the process of solving problem from the practice test number 1 that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 367, section 6. Problem number 21 is what we are about to do. Make sure the book is in front of you. Read the problem from the book yourself. It says, what is the least positive integer, what is the least positive integer that is not a factor of 25 factorials. So before we get going, let's understand a couple of things, a couple of concepts. First, first thing we need to understand is this quantity that is given to us. This is read as this is read as 25 factorial. This is how we read it. It is read as 25 factorial. For example, 5 factorial simply means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 7 factorials would have been, 7 factorials would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and so on and so forth. This is 25 factorials. If you were to multiply it all out, it's going to be a huge number. 25 times 24 times 23 times 22, all the way up to 1. It's a huge number, do you understand? So that's the first thing you need to understand. Second thing is, what does it mean, what does it mean when we say not a factor of something, or better yet, forget the not part right now, what does it mean to be a factor of something. What does it mean to be a factor of something? For example, 6 is a factor, 6 is a factor of 42. What does it mean? It simply means, it simply means that 42 is evenly divisible by 6. That's all it means. 42 is evenly divisible by 6. For example, if you were to divide 42 by 6, how many 6 does 42 have? 7 6. 7 6 are 42. 7 times 6 is 42. And we have a remainder of this 0. The remainder of 0 tells us that 42 goes evenly into 6. If 42 goes evenly into 6, that means 6 is a factor of 42. Similarly, we could have said, we could have switched the place. We can divide 70, 42 by 7. In other words, 42, 7 is a factor of 42. 6 is a factor of 42. 2 is a factor of 42, we can divide 42 by 2 evenly, we can divide 42 by 3. All of these are called factors of 42. Do you understand? Our job here is to identify the least positive integer among the answer choices here that is not a factor of that quantity. Let's begin. In other words, in other words, if you have a quantity 25 factorials, 25 times 24 times 23 times 20, all the way, all the way up to 3 times 2 times 1. Does, is this quantity evenly divisible? Is this quantity evenly divisible by 26? That's the question here. Well, I don't say 26. It stops at 25. How can we divide it by 26 if 26 doesn't appear here? Well, it's very simple. We write 26 as the product of its prime factor. 26 is made up of 2 times 13. 2 times 13. And now we can clearly see that this 2 will cancel out with that 2. And here, if you were to write out everything, we would have had a 13 here. In front of us, we would have a 14 here, and then we will have 12, but somewhere here we'll have a 13. And that 13 will cancel out with that 13. That tells us that 26 is indeed, is indeed a factor of that quantity. We are not going to multiply it out throughout, so, so, so we don't know what it is, but whatever that quantity is. But we read it simply as 25 factorial. So 6 is a factor of 25 factorial. This is what we, or rather 26. 26, we just established, 26 is a factor, is a factor of 25 factorial. This is how we speak in the language of mathematics. 26 is a factor of 25 factorial. That's just a mathematical way of saying uh, uh, that uh, 25 times 24 times 23, if you had the quantity all the way up to 1, that quantity is divisible evenly by 26, as we just saw here. Let's do the next one. Let's put down 13 here. Back. And now let's try 27. What can we do with 27? 
Again, 27 is simply made up of. Is it 27 and the second plus twice? I didn't. I don't remember to think 27. It's 28. It's wrong. Like I told you, I don't recall seeing 27. 27. It's 28 actually. 28 can be broken up into its, into its prime factors, prime numbers that are the factors of 28. We can divide by 2, we get a 1, we get a 4, we can divide by 2 again, we get this. So 28, 28 is essentially, 28 is essentially 2 times, we can do 2 times 2 times 7, or less better yet, 2 times 14. 2 times 14 because I just noticed a 14 here. So that 14 will go with that 14, this 2 will go with that 2, and there you go. It turns out that 28 is also a factor of 20. 28 is also a factor of 25 factorial. 28 is also a factor of 25 factorial. Let's try 36. Let's try 36. 36 that we see here can simply be written as 6 times 6, can't it? And if you were to do it out, here we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, eventually we're going to get a 6 here. So that 6 will go away with that 6. And 2 times 3 is a 6 will go with that 6. You see it goes evenly into it. Let's try 56. So, so 36 is a factor. 36, 36 is a factor of 25 factorial. Let's try 56. Fifty-six. How can we break up 56? How can we break up 56 into individual smaller quantity? what are known as prime factors. There we go. This is how we do it. What's the smallest number that we can think of that is that 2056 will go into? But 2056 is an even number. So obviously 2. How many 2's does 5 have? 5 has 2 2's. 2 2's are 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins to 6 and becomes 16. And 16 has 8 2's. Let's do one more round. No. If you wanted to, we could keep on going, divide by 2 again and get a 7 if you wanted to. But we don't have to do that because I see a 14 right there. We could do 2 times 2 times 2 times 7, but let's just stop here. 2 times 2 is 4 times 14. So essentially it's 4 times 14. 56 simply 4, 4 times 14. There is a 14 right there, and there is a 4 right there. 56 is also divisible by uh, 24. 56, so 56 is also a factorial of, 56 is also a factor of 25 factorial. I wonder what the answer is. The suspense is absolutely killing me. So let's do 58. As we try to break down the 58, here's what we're going to find. If we divide by 2, 5 has 2 2's, two, 2 2's are 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 8 and becomes an 18. And 18 has, 18 has 9 2's. What do we do next? Can we break it up further? The answer is no. 29, 29 is a prime number. 29 is the prime number. It cannot be broken up into smaller num into smaller factors. 29 is the best we can do. So the only way we can write 58, the only way we can write 58 in that denominator is 2 times 29. 2 we can get easily get rid of. But what about 29? 29 is the prime number. And this thing stops at 25. We don't have 25, 29 on the top. It will never appear on the top. Which means this quantity that you see there. 25 factorial, we just established that 58 is not, is not a factorial of 25 factorial. 58 is not. The answer is E. answer is E. One last thing that I want to talk about, I'm not going to raise it, one, one last thing I'll talk about is something that I left out on purpose, which is this. It's, the book says, what is the least positive integer that is not a factor of 25 and, this is the part I left out, and is not a prime number. And it's not a prime number. That's how they say it. As you can see, 58 itself is not a prime number. 58 is not a prime number because 58 can be divided by 2. A definition of prime number is that it cannot be divided by anything except itself and, and 1. 58 is not a prime number, it's an even number. The only pri only even number that's a prime number is a 2. After that, after 2, every even number cannot, no even number can be a prime number other than 2. 58 is not a, 58 is not a prime number. So why do you say it's not a prime number? Because it's not. Because without that, 
If they had simply said what is the least positive integer that is not a factor of 25 without this, without this qualification, without this qualification, the answer would have been 29. 29 is the smallest, the smallest number that you can find. What is the least positive integer that is not a factor of 20, 25? The answer is 29. I'll show you how. The smallest one, because, because as you see, if you had if you had 24, that will go there, 25 will go there. If you had 26 here, 26, 26 is simply 13 times 2, and we just saw it, that works. 27 would have been, if we had 27 at the bottom, it would have been 3 times 3 times 3, and that will work. 3 will go over here, and the 3 will go away with the 6, and the 3 will go away with the 9, and or the, or the or, you see? So 27 works, 28 would work, 29 is the first prime number that we will encounter, the smallest prime number that is not a factor of this quantity on the top. But since 29 is not one of the answer choices, answer, answer choice is actually 2 times 58, just to throw people off. They put answer choices as 2 times, uh, two, 2 times 29 rather, I meant to say 2 times 29, and that is not a prime number, which is why they have qualification, the qualification was, is not a prime number, and is not a prime number. Without that statement, people will, people will tell them, hey, look, our correct answer is not there. The correct answer is 29. It's not there. You understand? I've been using the word, I used it two or three times already. Let's learn it, shall we? I said, without that qualification, without that qualification. What does the word mean to qualify? Of course, there's a primary meaning of the word to qualify, which means to have the requisite kind of, uh, uh, training and the requisite uh, uh, skills and so forth for a job, whatever the job might be, but that's not how the word is being used here. What does it mean to qualify a statement? They just qualify that statement, which is why that qualification is there. What does it mean to qualify? As I'm speaking, I'm trying to find which day we learned it. I won't tell you what it means. If you want to learn, you do the work yourself. It was day number 27. Day 27. If you want to improve your vocabulary, just type in GRE, GRE vocabulary words. GRE vocabulary words, day 27. Video will pop up, watch it and learn what it means to qualify a statement. Okay? Enough of this thing. Let's move on to the next one. Number 22. Oh, I didn't give you the percentile here. I don't know. So the answer is E. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it's very unusual. The hard question, of course we come across hard questions. Of course we come across hard questions, but even the hard questions typically have a percentile of about 20 or so. Very rarely for you find a question where almost 90% of people missed it. It doesn't happen very often. This is one of them. Only 11% of people got this question right when this question appeared in the real exam. I don't know why, as I said. Number 22. But as you can see, once you understand the concept, it wasn't actually that bad, was it? It says, if 0 is less than A, which in turn is less than 1, which in turn is less than B, which of the following, which of the following, is true about the Reciprocal, reciprocals of A and B. And again, first thing first, first thing we want to understand is what does it mean to be a reciprocal? Well, reciprocal of 2, reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. Reciprocal of 7 would be 1 over 7. Reciprocal of 10 would be 1 over 10. How about what is the reciprocal of 1 half? Reciprocal of one half would be two. Essentially, what it is is two over one. One over two becomes two over one, and two over one becomes one over two. Because when we write two, is, when we write two, is the same as two over one. So the reciprocal of two is one over half, one over two. Reciprocal of one over two becomes two over one, which is just two. We have to understand that. So the question here is: If that is true, if zero is less than a, and a in turn is less than one, and one in turn is less than b, which of the following is true? about the reciprocal of A and B. Let's look at the first statement. First statement says 1 is less than 1 over A 
which in turn is less than 1 over v. How can we go about tackling it? Well, the easiest, the simplest, the quickest, the most economical and the least painful way is to simply plug in numbers. Plug in some numbers that work. Let's plug in, let's plug in half, let's plug in half for one, half for a rather, because zero is less than half, and half is less than one, and one in turn is less than two. Let's plug in two for b, and let's plug in half for a. Can you read it? I don't know if you can read it or not. That is half. Let's plug in half for a. And let's plug in 2 for b. And those are legitimate value because obviously 0 is less than half and half is in turn less than 1 and 1 is less than 2. And let's see if this makes sense. So it says 1 is less than 1 over 1 over a. a is half. So 1 over half which in turn is less than 1 over b which is simply 1 half. 1 over 2. What is 1 over 1 over 2? Or what is 1 over... what is we just talked about it. A is what you're looking for. So if A is half, if A is half, the reciprocal of A, which is 1 over A, would be 2. Would be 2. Because what we had was, what we had was 1 over, 1 over half. What do we do when we, had, when we had to divide a number with a fraction? We simply take the top number and multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom one, 2 over 1. 2 over 1. I'm explaining too much here. And the 1 goes away. And the reciprocal of, as you can see, 1 goes away and 1 divided by 1 half becomes 2. In other words, reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Reciprocal, is, reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So is it true? If it's true, then that's the answer. If it's not, we can knock it out. Knock it out does this. 1 is less than 2. I, okay, that's, that's correct. So far, so good. 1 is less than 2. And then they go on to say that 2 is less than 1 half. Is 2 less than 1 half? Of course not. 2 is not less than 1 half. Answer is not A. Answer is not A. Let's, let's erase these answers from the previous question. The answer is not A. Let's look at B. B says... B says 1 over A... And remember, 1 over me, A means... 1 over a means reciprocal of half. Reciprocal of half is 2. 1 over a would be 2. Reciprocal of 1 half would be 2. They say that one, 1 over a is less than 1, which in turn they say, say is less than 1 over b. Well, we don't have to go too far. So this quantity is 2. Is 2 less than 1? Obviously not. 2, 2 cannot be less than 1. It is not less than 1. That is wrong. It's wrong. B is not the answer. Let's move on to C. C says, C says that 1 over A is less than 1 over B, which in turn is less than 1 over, which, is, which in turn is less than 1. Reciprocal of A, A is 1 half, reciprocal of 1 half is 2, 2 is less than reciprocal of B. Reciprocal of B would be half. Because b is equal to 2, if you take the reciprocal, it's half. And if this is correct, then we are fine. Oh, it's not correct, I just noticed it. How, how can, how, okay, you're right, 2 is less than half, that's far, so far so good. But how can half, how can half, 2, oh no, 2 is not less than half, what the hell am I saying? 2 is not less than half, this part is correct, half is less than 1, but 2 is not, 2 is not less than half. In other words, we shouldn't, even, we shouldn't even have gone that far. This makes no sense. 2 is not less than half. Answer is not C. Let's move on to the next one. D. D says... 1 over B is less than 1, which in turn is less than 1 over A. Let's see if that makes sense. Well, B is 2... Reciprocal of B would be 1 over 2. A is half, reciprocal of half would be 2. So is, is, half, is half less than 1? Yes, of course, half is less than 1. And is 1 less than, is 1 less than 2? Answer is yes, 1 is less than 2. There you go. The answer is D. 
answer is D. Let's see why. Let's quickly see why E does not work. I'm curious. Let's find out what's wrong with E, shall we? Even though we don't have to. 1 over B it says is less than 1 over A, which in turn is less than 1. B is 2, reciprocal of B would be 1 half. 1 half is less than, no, I didn't write it right, I, I didn't write it correctly. What did I mess up? So this should have been 1, one over A. Yes. A is half, A is half, reciprocal of half would be 2. So, so far so good, half is indeed less than 2. But is 2, is two, is two less than 1? Of course not. 2, of course not. 2 cannot, cannot be less than 1. It's wrong. The answer is D as we said. The correct answer is D. Let's take a look at what the percentile was. Actually, this wasn't that bad. What I meant by that is that it's, it's not that bad in terms of how people perform. Even though, even though two-fifths of the people still missed it, more than two-fifths, more than 40% of the people missed, missed it, only 58% got it right. But what I meant is that it's far better, far better than what we saw in the previous question, where the percentile was, I think 11%, wasn't it? Yes. Just 11% of the people got it right. The previous one, number 21. But this one was not so bad. 58% of people were all right. Tomorrow, here's the game plan. If you turn the page, on the next page, if you have the book in front of you, on the next page you'll see question number 23, which has to do with geometry. It's not a straightforward question. It's actually, it involves a lot of jumping around, a lot of gymnastic to get to, to go to the answer. The concepts that are involved are not that bad. But it involves a lot of gymnastics, lots of, lots of jumping around and lots of twisting and uh, turning before we actually get to where we want to go. It's not a straightforward question. We'll deal with that question tomorrow, number 23. And then day after tomorrow, which will be the day, tomorrow will be 49. And on day 150, we'll do the very last two questions that you see, 24 and 25, day after tomorrow. So that's the plan. Tomorrow, question 23. And day after tomorrow, we'll do 24 and 25. And then two days from today, We'll start exam number two. Okay? Bye now.